Hello and a warm welcome to All This Week by LatestLaws.com. This is a weekly program, so hit the bell icon to get notifications for new videos. My name is Sheetal June, Associate Editor, LatestLaws.com, and I will be taking you through the significant orders and judgments passed by various courts in the country and some important international news from this week. Let's begin with Delhi High Court this week. Filing false complaints against one's spouse years after separation amounts to an act of cruelty. The Delhi High Court has ruled, adding that such actions not only cause humiliation to a person but can also lower his or her reputation in the community. The court's ruling came in a petition filed by a woman against a family court's order in a divorce petition filed by her husband, wherein the court had opined that the woman had not only filed false and fabricated complaints before the crime against women CAW cell after their separations, but had also leveled fake allegations that he beat his son and ruled that her conduct clearly reflected her intention to permanently abandon him. The husband had alleged that his wife had a quarrelsome nature and that she not only refused to live with him but also had an affair with another man and that she backed out twice when, he, when the duo had agreed to divorce by mutual consent. The Delhi High Court has upheld the legality of the city civic body's decision mandating marking of attendance by all employees of its two hospitals through a mobile application, saying the measure was taken for improving the healthcare system and instilling discipline and accountability among its employees. Justice Chandra Dhari Singh dismissed the petition by a Paramedical Technical Staff Welfare Association of the Municipal Corporation of Delhi, challenging the policy and said that without measures to ensure attendance and accountability, there was a real risk of systemic failure in the healthcare sector. He rejected the petitioner's contention that the new system of marking attendance amounted to infringement of the employee's right to privacy. The Delhi High Court has set aside a 2011 order of the Central Information Commission that directed the disclosure of the opinion given to the centre by the then Solicitor General of India in 2007 in various cases filed by the Cellular Operators Association of India on the allotment of 2G spectrum. The court held that such information is exempted under the provisions of the Right to Information Act except when there is weighty reasons to support that its disclosure is in public interest. This is Subramanian Prasad while dealing with the centre's challenge to the Central Information Commission order said that the relation between the Solicitor General of India and the Government of India is that of fiduciary and a beneficiary and hence accepted under Section 81E of the Act. The Enforcement Directorate is exempted from the scope of the Right to Information Act, but it can be directed to supply information concerning human rights violations, which includes allegation of sexual harassment, the Delhi High Court has held. The court passed the order while dealing with two petitions by the Enforcement Directorate, challenging two orders of the Central Information Commission, directing disclosure of certain information to RTI applicants. While one of the applicants sought administrative information to uh, pertaining to recruitment rules, the other, a legal advisor to the ED, wanted information related to allegations of sexual harassment leveled by her. Now let's have an overview of other High Courts. The Himachal Pradesh High Court has opined that there is no presumption that a person who is convicted of a serious or heinous crime is to be ispo facto treated as hardened criminal. A hardened criminal would be a person for whom it has become a habit or a way of life and such a person would necessarily tend to commit crime again and again. Obviously, if a person has committed a serious offence for which he is convicted, but is, if such crime has only been committed once, the person cannot be said to be a hardened criminal. The court noted, adding that convict, convicts too must breathe fresh air for at least some time provided they maintain good conduct consistently during incarnation and show a tendency to reform themselves and become good citizens. The Jharkhand High Court in a petition challenging upgradation in pay scale has determined that salary does not fall within the scope of a recurring cause of action, while pension does where recurring refers to the ongoing suffering of the litigant, particularly for public servants where the suffering persists day by day and further delayed communications, often adverse entry should not retroactively affect promotions or pay scale upgrades. The High Court of Jammu and Kashmir and Ladakh has held that availing maternity leave during probation does not result in break in service. The single judge bench of Justice Sanjay Sanjeev Kumar held that deeming the maternity leave period as a break in service constitutes a violation of Article 14 and 16 of the Constitution of India by employers. The Punjab and Haryana High Court, while dismissing an appeal, filed against the conviction under Section 302 IPC held that when there is ample evidence to support the prosecution's account, the statement of the complainant remains credible even if the complainant became uncooperative during cross-examination. 
The court also rejected the contention about the non-admissibility of the expert's report due to accused not being given an opportunity for cross-examination and concluded that despite the complainant turning hostile during cross-examination, his statement could be relied upon due to sufficient corroborating evidence. The delay in cross-examination was attributed to the accused's success in influencing the complainant over seven months. The Karnataka High Court, while dismissing an appeal filed under Section 100 of the Civil Procedure Code, observed that if the defendants never seriously disputed the plaintiff's relationship and if no issue was framed before the trial court, the defendants cannot be permitted to raise any petition with regard to the plaintiff's relationship for the first time in the second appeal. Moving on to international news this week. South Korea's top court order to Japanese companies to financially compensate more to their wartime Korean workers for forced labor as it sided with its contentious 2018 verdicts on the firm that caused a huge setback in relations between the Asian neighbors. The Supreme Court ruled that Mitsubishi Heavy Industries and Nippon Steel Corporation must provide compensation to each of four plaintiffs, all bewildered families of the uh, formal employees who were forced to work for the Japanese companies during Japan's 1910 to 45 colonial rule of the Korean Peninsula. A court in Pakistan has ruled that former Prime Minister Imran Khan's party can contest election using its cricket bat logo, a relief for the jailed proposition leader in advance of national elections. The High Court of Peshawar suspended order of the Election Commission of Pakistan barring Khan's par, uh, party, Pakistan Tariqa Insaf, PTI, par, from using its election symbol. Israel's High Court of Justice is reportedly set to strike down the controversial reasonableness limitation law passed by the government earlier this year as part of its judicial overhaul program. In what would be a momentous and highly contentious decision, channel, uh, it was reported that the unprecedented bench of 15 judges split down the line with the eight liberal voting in favor of annulling the law and seven conservative voting against. Such a decision would be incredibly Controversial since the law passed as an amendment to one of Israel's quasi-constitutional basic laws which the court has never been before struck down and which the government and legal conservatives have systemically argued are not subject to judicial review. A Hong Kong court has rejected a bid by the legal team of pro-democracy tycoon Jimmy Lai to have sedition charges against him dropped in a closely watched national security trial. Lai is the founder of now-shuttered pro-democracy newspaper Apple Daily. He was charged with conspiracy to publish seditious app publications under a colonial-era sedition law. Lai's lawyer, Robert Pang, has argued that the sedition charge would be, should be dismissed as the prosecution failed to lay the charge within six months of the alleged offences. In the end, we have miscellaneous news. Withdrawing its earlier notices dated 21 November 2023 and 28 November 2023, the Bar Council of Delhi has now issued a new notice to streamline the verification and declaration process. The decision has been made owing to frequent clarifications that were sought after the issuing of those notices. The Council has however clarified that those advocates who have already filed up for verification forms issued under the previous two notices now which are now discarded need not file the same again. President Draupadi Murmu has assented to three new criminal justice bills passed by the parliament, the three laws, the Bharti Nyaya Sanheta, the Bharti Nagrik Suraksha Sanheta and the Bharti Saksha Act will replace the colonial era Indian Penal Code, the Code of Criminal Procedure and the Indian Evidence Act. The president also signed the Telecommunications Act 2023. Thank you for watching and have a nice day. This is a weekly program and to get more information, please check the description box and for weekly updates, like and subscribe to our channel.